Hello everyone, welcome back to Together in Worship. It's always good to be with you. And whether you're watching on a Sunday or at any time during the week, we're so pleased that we can worship like this just now. You will have seen that today's video is called Food for the Journey. And both this week and next, we're looking at food that is provided by God. This week, we're looking at the prophet Elijah, who was given food when he felt he had nothing left at all in life. We'll look at that later, but let's begin with a song that's inspired by a well-known story about Elijah, which tells us about the time fire fell upon the altar. We'll ask that God's Spirit will do something similar with our offering today as we sing Send the Fire. from Psalm 34. They are words of praise, but also words of encouragement and reassurance. I will extol the Lord at all times. His praise will always be on my lips. I will glory in the Lord. Let the afflicted hear and rejoice. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord and he answered me. He delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. This poor man called, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him, and he delivers them. We're going to hear about a man today who felt very troubled, but God provided for him. That reading also spoke about the angel of the Lord. Well, here's a chorus that reminds us that when we are in the presence of God, there are indeed angels around us.
Let's pray together. Father, we come to you today with praise on our lips, love in our heart, and a desire just to come into your presence. Some of us are by ourselves, others are in company, but wherever we are, however we're feeling today, we are glad that you are here. You tell us to draw near in faith, to come before the throne of grace with boldness, and so, Lord, we come. You are a faithful, loving and gracious Father, and as your children we gather together knowing that you welcome us. After this week that has passed, we have much to bring to you. Our thanksgiving, our need of strength, our desire for forgiveness and cleansing. Lord, receive our praise and answer our prayers for grace and mercy. May these minutes we spend in this way be helpful to us, encouraging and reassuring. And then, Lord, as we end this time, may we go into the week ahead, knowing that joy which comes from walking with you. Lord, receive our prayers again as we say that we love you. And we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So let the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw that, he arose and ran for his life, and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he prayed that he might die, and said, It is enough. Now, Lord, take my life, for I am no better than my father's. Then, as he lay and slept under a broom tree, suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Arise, and eat. Then he looked, and there by his head was a cake baked on coals and a jar of water. So he ate and drank, and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came back the second time, and touched him, and said, Arise, and eat, because the journey is too great for you. So he arose, and ate, and drank. And he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights as far as Horeb, the mountain of God. Have you ever been on a diet? Now from experience I can say that you can have good intentions, you have a plan, 
And it's easy to stick to that plan. Lots of vegetables, lean meat, lots of fruit. But you restrict the chocolate, the donuts, the bread, the pies. Oh, I could carry on. And that's the problem because we're okay with that until we're fed up, until we're angry or worried or bored. And what do we do? We look for comfort food. Something that just for a moment will give us something to enjoy. Biscuits, cake, crisps. Now I want to talk about food this week and next week too. Comfort food. Food that gives respite, pleasure, encouragement, sustenance. And we have a candidate today who absolutely needed a break. He needed something for the journey. Elijah was an amazing man. We've already sung today a song that was inspired by that astonishing story of fire coming down from heaven. And you'll remember it. The pagan priest of Baal egged on by Queen Jezebel versus the prophet of the true God. And Elijah cries out to the people, If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. And he challenges the false prophets to build an altar as he does the same. Sacrifices are placed on them, and Elijah says that whichever God answers prayer with fire for the altar, they should worship him. And we know that the Lord God himself sent fire, and the prophets of Baal, unsurprisingly, got nothing. How amazing Elijah felt that day. Invincible. God was on his side, and everyone knew the truth. It was literally a mountaintop experience. And he was so joyful and confident. And there have been times in church when revival has come, when there has been victory. And you read stories of how churches were growing, communities were changed. I once researched the history of the Salvation Army in Gateshead, where they used a music hall for their first meetings. And it grew so large, and the audiences at the music hall grew so small. And the army bought the theatre. And so many young criminals were among the converts that the local police station literally had nobody in the cells. That's what happens when the fire falls. Samuel Chadwick, a Methodist preacher from a few generations ago, wrote, Conversions not only bring prosperity to the church, they solve the social problem. Our world could do with that kind of revival now. But the church often loses confidence and power. And Elijah lost all his blessing when he heard that the queen wanted to kill him. And he ran away scared. He was at rock bottom because of this threat. He'd been up on that mountain and now he was down in the valley. And he lay down. I want to give up. I want to die. I'm no better than my father's. And maybe we have personally felt those times when our joy has gone, our confidence has waned. We've had a blessing, but then discouragement has come. And there's another part to this story that you may know as well. Elijah later on comes to a cave and God calls him to stand there. There's a, there's a great wind and then an earthquake and then there's a fire. And I would have thought that after the fire on the mountain, with the altar, a kind of repeat of that would have encouraged Elijah. God could have reminded him of the defeat of the prophets of Baal. Reminded him that God was powerful. God was still with him. There's the fire again, he would have said. But no, there was a still, small voice. And God spoke quietly to him. I'd be just as happy with the still, small voice of God, wouldn't you? However quiet, I'd like a voice to speak to me sometimes. And we talk about mountaintop experiences, and we do have times of blessing, but just occasionally I'd like to hear something so sure and so certain as a quiet voice. In fact, in my experience, even a still small voice would count as a mountaintop experience. So we know about the fire on the altar, a great victory. We know about the still small voice, that personal reassurance that God is with us. But there's a part of the story that I don't think is so well known, and we heard it today, in between the mountaintop and in between the still small voice. Here's what happens. 
Elijah is physically exhausted. He's spiritually low. Perhaps there's even a mental health struggle. There's no self-worth, no hope, just a low opinion of himself. He's had the fire and God is going to speak to him soon in that still small voice. But in the meantime, what does God do? Cake. While Elijah slept exhausted, an angel comes and sets next to him a cake cooked on the coals, together with a jar of water. And the writer says this, God knew how to treat his servant resting beneath the tree. He steeped his nature in refreshing sleep. He fed his exhausted energies. He caused angel hands to minister to him. And I was thinking about this. Noah got a rainbow. Moses saw a burning bush. Isaiah was amazed by the sight of God and his robe filling the temple. What did Elijah get? Cake. And what would you choose? God could have come to Elijah in any way, parting the sea, leading him by a pillar of fire, stopping up the mouths of lions, slaying giants. And personally, I look at the times when great men and women of God have had these wonderful mountaintop experiences. Think of the Wesleys, William and Catherine Booth, Billy Graham, giants of the faith, and people who write Christian books or have great testimonies. They're fascinating to read, but things you can write in a book don't always happen to me, or to you maybe. But do you know something? God often comes to us with cake. Now, whether we've had a mountaintop experience or not, whether we're in a time of crisis or when things are just plodding on, God doesn't usually come in dramatic ways. Nobody knows what we do need. You might not need a miracle. You might not need a great victory. You certainly don't need a lesson in faith or a rebuke for doubting. But God may send an angel with cake. Something comforting, something homely, something ordinary, something that will sustain you on the next stage of whatever journey you have to take. Now the angel bringing it to you could be a friend, a spouse, someone from church. The cake that they provide could be a simple kind word, a phone call, a Facebook message, a text, a card. It could be a gift and yes it could even be a cake. It's interesting that the God who answers by fire will not just speak to you by yourself in a still small voice. He'll come to you in a human way, an unremarkable way that gives you what you didn't ask for, but which you need. And I want to encourage you today and say that God knows what you need because he knows what you've done. He knows how you feel. He knows where you're going. And when we have no faith, no strength, perhaps even no direction, God will provide cake. Herbert Booth, one of the founder's sons, wrote this, I've little strength to call my own, and what I've done before thy throne I here confess is small. But in thy strength, O God, I lean, and through the blood that makes me clean, thou art my all in all. Christ is all, yes, all in all. My Christ is all in all. When you're like Elijah, look for the cake, the sustaining grace of God that comes in all kinds of ways. Often the angel is someone you know, and often the help that God gives is so very ordinary. The secret, the blessing comes when we realize that even the ordinary things are gifts from God. They are cakes brought by angels.
Let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your word for us today, for the story of a great man who, like us all, had weaknesses and moments of doubt. Lord, may we be encouraged by his story today. There are times when we are blessed, when life is good and fulfilling. Thank you for that blessing. But Lord, there are times when faith is tested, when joy is hard to find. On those days, help us to look for a heart's refreshment and a soul's repose. Help us to see your hand in the simple things around us, in the love of others, the gifts of everyday life, in the beauty of nature and the kindness of friends. In your word, in the calmness of our prayers, may we find the strength and assurance we need. As we journey on, may we find indeed that you are sustaining us, providing for us, guiding us forward. We realise that we are never alone, and we pray, Lord, that we would have open eyes, ears and hearts to know you as we walk together. Be with us through these coming days, for we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
hope that you've been encouraged today in worship. Remember that wherever you are today, or throughout this week, God is always with you. May his grace, peace and richest blessing be with you now and always. Amen. Thank you.